Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're working on math test success so you could be as successful as possible on any standardized math exam, specifically the ASVAB military placement exam. This is all about doing well on both the arithmetic reasoning portion and the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB exam. This is a 25 chapter book looks like this right here. You could buy it on Amazon for about 13 bucks. I made it available almost at cost, or you could even download it for free on the webpage mathtestsuccess.com. I am very concerned that you are as successful as you possibly can be, and the way you are gonna be successful is through practice and work. So the best case scenario is you work your way through this whole book, and then you take these practice tests Go into the actual test feeling confident, knowing the math, and doing the very best you can. You can't learn to juggle by watching me juggle. you got to practice. You can't learn math by watching me do math. You have to practice. So you should have this book out in front of you. Pencil out. Watch the video. Take some notes inside of the book. When we get the problems, pause the video. Take the whole test, maybe, with the video pause. Do the very best you can. Unpause the video and then watch how I took the test and check your answers against mine. So with all that said, let's go ahead and take this algebra test. Again, pause the video and at least do one or two problems at a time. Unpause the video and watch how I do it. So number one right here, solve for x. This is saying you have to get that variable x all by itself. This is an equation because it has an equal sign. That is different than this, which is an expression. Solve, you're going to solve equations. Simplify, you're going to simplify expressions. So what I want to do here is a reverse of order of operations. I need to work to get that x by itself. I have 3x plus 5 equals 14. First thing I want to do is subtract that 5 from both sides of the equation. I could do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. I still have that 3x. 5 minus 5, those cancel. That equal sign comes straight down. 14 minus 5 is 9. Working to get that x by itself, it is being multiplied. The reverse operation of multiplication is division. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. These are going to cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That gives me x by itself. If I do that to the left, I have to do it to the right as well. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Correct answer, 3 right here. This, again, is an equation, and I am using reverse operations to get the x by itself. This is an expression. All I can do in an, in an expression is get all of my similar terms together. I am using the rules of algebra to do that. I can't do whatever I want to both sides because there are no both sides. There is no equal sign. The only way I could really change numbers in an expression is by multiplying by factors of 1. We see that a lot when we're adding and subtracting fractions. One more time, equation, expression. So with that said, let's jump down to number 2 and simplify that expression. So this is 2 times a quantity minus 4x. What I have to do here is distribute that 2 through the whole quantity. As I look at that problem, I can see that's kind of the trick. So I do 2 times x, so 2x, two, 2 times 3, minus 4x. Now that I have that, I need to combine all of my similar terms. Well, I have a 2x minus a 4x, Two apples minus four apples is negative two x, and there's nothing to do with that six. These are dissimilar terms. They cannot be combined. So my answer, my simplified answer, is negative two x plus six. I can't do anything more there to simplify it at all. It is not a solution. It is only a simplification. Okay, number three, factor. I'm not solving for anything here. This is really like a simplification problem. One little clue I could look at all of my possible answers, and I see I have these two factors. If you remember this from the chapter on algebra, the way you get from here to here is you FOIL. That's a mnemonic device. 
I think that's what it's called, FOIL. Or maybe an acronym, I guess that's an acronym. It means you multiply the first terms together, the outer terms together, the inner terms together, and the last terms together to get to this. So that means I have to do the opposite of that. So if I am factoring this, I'm gonna set up these two brackets. I am looking for values times themselves to equal x. Well, the only thing to equal x squared is an x and an x. Now I'm looking for the factors of 12. When multiplied together, give me a 12, but when added together, give me a four. I could have a 12 and a one. They multiply together, give me a 12 but there's no way I could add or subtract these to get a four, right? 12 plus one is 13, 12 minus one is 11. Other factors of 12 are a six and a two. They, they equal 12, but when I add them, six minus two is four, and six plus two is eight, so I can get a four out of this. So this is looking like my factors. The other factors of 12 are four and a three. Multiplied together, they give me a 12, but added, they're gonna give me a seven or a one. So I could see it has to be the six and the two. To get a negative 12 here, that means one of them's negative, one's positive. So I need a negative positive or a positive negative. How I decide that is I have this foil outer inner. I'm gonna have to take this value and this value, add them together to get a negative four X. So this has to be the negative and this the positive. So that's how I factor that. Let's take another look at it, make sure I did it correctly. Maybe as I reverse the operation, it might bring back some memories. I'm going to multiply the first terms together. That's going to give me x squared. The outer terms together, that's going to give me 2x. The inner terms together, negative 6x. The last terms together, negative 12. I combine similar terms x squared, 2x minus 6x is negative 4x minus 12, and I could see I have my original one. So the factors of x squared minus 4x minus 12 is x minus 6, x plus 2, answer A right here. Okay, hopefully you're doing these problems before I do them. This is a good assortment of algebra problems that you're going to see on the ASVAB. There'll be multiple choice with no calculator. So here, I am asking you to solve for y, but all of my answers are what's called an ordered pair. It is an x, y value. But all my y values are different, so I could see I don't have to solve for x, I only need to solve for y. Decoding, this one's a little tricky. I have one equation right here, y equals 2x plus one, and another equation right here, 3x plus y equals six two variables, x and y, I have to have two equations. What I want to do here is I either could combine them or substitute. Both uh, systems work, and it's kind of your choice. I'm kind of looking at it, and I see that y is equal to this. Well, if y is equal to that, I could just take it and plug it in right there. Then I'm going to have one equation with one variable. So I have this equation right here. 3x plus y is equal to 6, right? 3x plus y is equal to 6. And then I am telling you that y is equal to 2x plus 1. Now I have one equation, one variable. I'm going to combine similar terms. 3x and 2x is 5x plus 1 equals 6. Subtract 1 from both sides. 5x, 1 minus 1 is 0, 6 minus 1 is 5. I reverse addition with subtraction. I reverse multiplication with division. These cancel, that gives me x by itself. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. Again, this is an x value, and it says to solve for y. This is the only x value up here is going to be an a, where x is equal to 1. So I could just circle A and know that's the correct answer. But as a check to solve for Y, I'm going to take that 1 and plug it in for X. So I have Y equals 2 times X 
plus 1, y is equal to 2 plus 1, y is equal to 3. My first value of my coordinate is 1, x. My second value is y, 3. Correct answer, answer A. A lot of information there. Um, if none of that's really making sense, go back to that chapter on solving systems of equations. All right, number five. This is almost on every ASVAB mathematical knowledge exam. Do you know the rules of exponents? You see these written two different ways. This is a common way, like an equation editor. But this right here means x to the power of 2. So this is x squared. This is 1 over x. This is x to the power of 9. And this is just x. The rules of exponents are if I am multiplying two together, I add the exponents. So in the numerator here, x to the third times x squared, the bases, x's, are the same. Then I add the exponents to get x to the fifth over x to the fourth. The next rule of exponents I need to know is that if the bases are the same and I am dividing, then I subtract my exponents. So the rule is x to the m times x to the n. When I'm multiplying, I add the exponents. When I am dividing, I subtract the exponents. This is called the base. That's the exponent. So this is the same as this. So I have the same bases. I stay with that base of x. 5 minus 4 is 1 x to the first and x are the same thing. So the correct answer, answer A right here. Number six, another factoring problem. I'm going to set that up is an x and an x. Factors of six to give me a five. Well, six and a one will work because that'll, um, six minus one will give me a five, but a three and a two will also work. But I have a negative here and a positive here, so they both have to be negative. So if I did a negative 6 and a negative 1, there's no way to get a 5. So it is not the factors of 6 and 1, but the factors of 3 and 2. I put those in here. Uh, either they're both positive or both negative. To give me that negative, they both have to be negative. And then this is different than the previous one because this is an equation that says solve for x. So now that I have this thing factored, it is equal to 0. I could double check that too. Let me double check that I factored it correctly. First, x squared, outer, uh, negative 2x, inner, negative 3x, last, 6. x squared minus 5x plus 6. I did factor it correctly. Now that I factored it correctly, the whole reason of factoring like this is to use a zero-sum property. I have this quantity times this quantity is equal to zero. So that means either x minus 3 has to be equal to zero, or x minus 2 has to be equal to zero. So now I have an equation here. I'm going to add 3 to both sides x is equal to 3, or I'm going to add 2 to both sides and get x is equal to 2. Two solutions, either 2 or 3. Correct answer, answer A right there. I guess when I made this test, uh, I made too many of the answer A's. That will never happen on the ASVAB or any other standardized uh, math exam. Um, that's just my bad right there. OK, let's take a look at 7 and 8. These problems right here are mathematical knowledge problems. This is 3 times the root of 2, three, 2 times the root of 3, right? So they look like that. What I am looking for in square root of 18 is I am looking to simplify it. I need to look at the factors of 18. They are a 9 and a 2. I could also do a 6 and a 3, a lot of ways to do it. But I am looking for perfect squares inside of there. A 9 is a 3 and a 3. Whenever I have a pair 
one comes out. So here's a pair. It comes out. There is no pair for this one. It stays in. Correct answer. Answer A, no surprise there, 3 root 2. Let me do that one again a different way. Let's say you saw root 18 as a 6 and a 3. Well, a 6 is made up of a 3 and a 2. Every pair, one comes out. No pair for the 2, it stays in. Gives me the exact same answer. All right, this is called an inequality. It is like an equality, an equation. However, it is not equal to 3. It is greater than 3. So this reads 2x minus 7 is greater than 3. These are solved just like equations with one really important thing. If I have negative 2x is greater than or less than 6, when I divide by a negative, when I divide by a negative, I switch that sign. So I'm dividing by a negative. This is greater than. This becomes less than. x by itself, negative 3. It's not going to matter on this one, but this is the most important rule to remember with inequalities. So I'm going to treat this just like an equation. 2x minus 7 is greater than 3. Add 7 to both sides. These cancel 2x is greater than 10. Divide by a positive 2, does not change the sign. x is greater than 5. Correct answer, answer B right there. OK, a couple more problems here. What is the slope of the line passing through these points? Remembering m is a letter we reserve for slope. It is the rise over the run. Rise is up and down, so it's a change in y values over the change in x values. Doesn't matter which point I call my first or my second, but once I call this my first point, or this my first point, then this has to be x1, y1. This has to be x2, y2. Again, this is an ordered pair, x always before y. So I have my equation here. y2 is 9 minus y1, 5, over 3 minus 1. 9 minus 5 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. My slope is 4 over 2. That reduces to 2 over 1, or just 2. Correct answer, answer B right there. All right, last problem, problem number 10. If you're still here, fantastic. You're doing great work. All of this stuff you probably saw back in high school, maybe in ninth, 10th grade or somewhere, um, and you might have got it, but it, it might have been a long time since you've seen it. I'm hoping this review will really help you be successful on your exam. Uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Please share this with anybody else. I'm telling you, just a little bit of practice and review will go a long way on any math exam. Uh, buy the book, do the whole course, or just take these exams at the end. If you find, kind of forgot things like this, go back to the chapter on slope and y-intercepts. OK, number 10. This is about function notation. This is saying f of x. It is a function. That's the same thing as y. f of x is equal to 3x minus 2. What is f of 4? So this is saying this places in there. So f of 4 is equal to 3 times x. Well, I'm telling you x is 4 minus 2. So f of 4 is equal to 12 minus 2. 12 minus 2 is equal to 10. Correct answer, answer B, right there. OK, if you have the book, all the answers are down below here. Um, but hopefully you went through that whole video. Hopefully you're really successful. You're going to go into that exam with a lot of confidence, a lot of practice. And good luck. Keep studying, keep working. The harder you work, the better you do. That's just the way the world works. Okay. Thank you.